Hi, I'm Raymond, KB9 CRL. This afternoon I'm going to be putting a uh, 6 meter antenna together and showing you how to do it. This uh, 6 meter antenna that I built not only does 6 meter FM and single sideband, but it also, where the plus comes in at, it also does 2 meter sideband. So I will give you step by step on how to put the antenna together. And I hope uh, everyone has fun putting it together, sure I, sure I sure did. Now here's some of the tools that you'll need to put this antenna together. And you will need a soldering gun, maybe not one this big, and some solder, some heat shrink. Uh, the only two tools that you'll need is a Phillips screwdriver, and a 3 8 wrench. Uh, need a cramp tape measure. You don't have to be 25 feet. Just nothing there's going to be 25 feet. You need a uh, heat gun. Now if you don't have a heat gun, a cigarette lighter will work just as well as long as you don't get the flame too close to the heat shrink. And then it's always nice to be able to test continuity through your connectors that you're putting on there to make sure you don't have a short. So the next I will show you what we'll have to have as far as uh, hardware. Okay what you'll need is four bolts and of course the uh, uh, washers, lock washer, and then the nut. Two inches is what I used. And you need four of them. You'll also need the terminals that solders. You can solder them right there. And that here in a few minutes I'll show you where the wire goes. You'll need two PL259s. Now the PL259 in the reducer has to be for RG8X or Mini 8 or your cable won't fit through here because you're going to be using a 75 ohms cable that will go through here. You'll need a T and you'll also need a barrel connector and that will get you hooked up. And we're ready for the next step. Okay to put this antenna together to make SWR work you'll have to use 75 ohms cable and uh, 75 ohms is what makes it have the uh, match on there so it's cool phased the antenna is cool phased because what you're working with there you're working with not only transmitting FM but you're also transmitting single sideband without having to run two coist cables back to your shack you wouldn't be able to do it uh, but with this antenna that I'm building here, one coil cable to the shack is all you're going to need. So what you need to do to start with, to help, that will help you get this started, have two pieces of uh, 75 ohms cable and have them come out fairly close to each other for a little match. That will start you. Then what you do, the very first thing that you need to do on the on this because this this wiring here that harness that I'm getting ready to tell you is very critical if you don't get it exactly right the antenna won't work properly so what you need to do first on this end is put a PL259 
So, and I'm quite sure everyone knows how PL 259 is on cable, so I won't have to show that, but put that on there, and there's a reason why you put the PL 259 on first. So, anyway, after you get the PL 259 on, you come back and you strip off, uh, I'd say about uh, two and a half to three inches of uh, the insulation on the outside, and you'll come up with something that looks like this. Then what you need to do is take, uh, a, and I use a nail or a pocket knife, and uh, pull this braid here back, and be very careful with it because on this particular cable here, the braid breaks very easily. So what you do when you get that pulled back, you give that a twist, and twist it up really good. That's your ground wire. This is your hot, this is your feed bar. Now, as you can see, this has a, it's kind of like a thin pin foil around it. You've got to get rid of that. And sometimes it'll peel off, but if it doesn't peel off, and you may have a little bit of left, you take your heat gun or your cigarette lighter and just warm it up and it'll peel off and then it will look like this right here and this is what you're after no nothing here because ground cannot touch hot or it'll short out so what you you have to get rid of all the uh, uh, tin foil around it then to keep this ground wire from unwinding that's where the heat shrink comes in so you just cut a piece of heat shrink slip it over it and heat it up with your either your cigarette lighter or your gun and leave just a little bit sticking out because that's where these connectors will go it will go on this and you'll have that and also leave a little bit sticking out here and this will go down and on here and then that's where you take your soldering gun and put your solder and solder this right here connector and so it'll hold. And this and everything here on this one turned out just fine. Then, then what happens is after you get all that put together you'll come up with, a, with the antenna wires like this. Now referring to the hot this is your center lead this is the hot wire this is the most critical one in here. The ground can be anywhere. So this this will uh, be your hot and your ground. Now when I match these and I put I put the two PL 259s and matched them just like that in a vise and then I pulled out through here and brought out where that these two wires, which is your hot lot wire, matches to a T. It has to be red at the end. Now the reason why that is, since you're running two different antennas, if you've got one that's shorter than the other one, the radio recognizes the one that's the longest. And say uh, the, it's the FM portion of the uh, wire that's uh, just a, like it don't take much just a, just a small amount say the FM is here and the sideband's here it's going the radio is going to recognize the FM over the sideband portion of the antenna and it'll be feeding off of the vertical and we all know that FM is vertical and single sideband is horizontal which I will show in the antenna uh, in the uh, next segment. So that's why, that's why the wires has to line up from tip to tip. And we're talking about this tip to this tip. Not necessarily the gr uh, ground, but if, if you get them all matched together, they should come right out even. And then the antenna will tune up with an SWR. If you're out looking for a TV antenna, 
to build this antenna. And this antenna was built solely from an old TV antenna. Don't be looking for this type of antenna. Because the reason why the insulators won't match. This in here is the one that you need to look for. The elements, of course there will be a lens, horizontal, but the elements will be straight across from each other. Then, then everything from this and this old TV antenna here will build this antenna. Okay, now here is the finished product. The antenna. It's made out of TV antenna. The vertical one is your FM. You got to make sure that when you put this together that your hot center lead right here goes to this element and the one that's sticking straight up towards the sky is, is how you want it. You don't want your hot feed going to the ground. That's for ground. Hot up, ground down. So your center lead here will go to the portion of the vertical hot portion of the six meter antenna and then the ground wire with that same cable goes to the ground portion and it's going to the ground now when it comes to the sideband portion of the antenna the horizontal it doesn't make no difference which one's hot and which one's ground but they do have to be separated with the connectors now I told you there a while ago with the uh, TV antennas these insulators here is all vertical or horizontal, how you want. They're not slanted. With that old TV antenna that is slanted, won't work because your elements has to be up and down, straight up and down and side to side. They can't be at a like a fish back or fishbone back. So that's why you have to look for that the straight TV antenna. Now, as I was Showing you the, the uh, 75 ohms that uh, was, uh, I was making there a while ago. That's where this goes. So it, one goes on the one post and then it goes on the other post. Then it feeds back with the PL259. Of course now, you're saying, wow, Raymond, that's not even close to being uh, major raw. We've got one short, one long, but the the wires hasn't changed. They're still even. These wires will go into the T, and they'll just screw right into the T. And at the bottom of the T, will you will uh, put the uh, barrel connector in, and then that will fasten to your cable, your RJ8X or eight or. LM400 or whatever you want to run into your shack and that uh, will screw the uh, PL259 on your cable that you're running into the shack will go into the bottom of the uh, barrel connector and the T. Now if, you, if I turn this over right here like I say everything that you need to build this antenna is in an old TV antenna so these little clips here sit right in between the two plastic parts. So when you turn it around and you tighten down the bolt and the nut, the antenna will not move because it's locked in place on each one of them. There are some different angles. You've got some here that's got the bone points, but they lock in where the elements won't move. So that's pretty well and then you just bolt the uh, insulators to your part of your TV antenna again which is the uh, mask or the boom part of your old TV antenna use that same thing drill you a couple holes in it here for a U clamp and it does do better uh, if it's on top of uh, a pole I, I had mine on top of a pole. Uh, if you do mount it on the side of a tower, uh, you might want to make a long, use your old TV antenna and get a longer uh, mask out here, get it away from metal. 
any antenna that you buy, if you buy it factory or if you build it, the further you can get it from metal and uh, trees, if they got leaves on them, the better off you're going to be. Uh, in my case, I don't have the pole anymore, so I put it on the side of the tower. Now, if you should happen to have a uh, repeater in your area on FM, uh, then then you need to uh, uh, have the vertical ever on the side of your tower be on the side of the tower that's pointing towards the repeater. You don't want it on the opposite side because it will re reflect the signal. Now we're getting down to the elements. And each one of these elements here on for the uh, sideband portion of it, uh, the TV antenna is not going to be long enough any element you take off of it so you have to add another segment and what I did I just took a hacksaw and I just split this tubing here slid this one in and then put a small radiator uh, clamp on there and tighten it down and they do have measurements for your uh, sideband portion that's from right here right at the end of this all the way to the tip is 56 inches and an eighth. 56 and eighth inch. That's for your sideband. It'd be 56 and eighth on this one, and also on this one. Now, for the FM portion, the one that's going to be vertical, that's 54 inches for FM. It'd be from the tip to the tip, 54 inches on the hot side and the ground side. And the way I measured that was. Uh, your uh, calling frequency on sideband is 50.125 and on FM it's 52.525 and that's what they're cut for. That means that it will work anything in that band from, from the beginning of the band to the end of the band because they're cut for the middle, more or less the middle of the band. So I think that's about it. I hope everybody has fun building their antenna. I did, and uh, uh, if you got any questions, I have an email address on the uh, YouTube website here. Feel free to uh, contact me. And uh, happy building antennas. This is Raymond, KB9COL.